Hello, my name is Jeremiah Bannister. I haven't made a video in a long time, but I have a really, really massive, huge, honking, super duper big request for you. But before I ask you this huge request, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, it all kind of started back in 2017, and that was the year that my children changed my life. We'd gone through some really rough times. In fact, for about a year and a half prior to that, we lost our daughter, our firstborn, Samantha, to a really rare and aggressive kind of cancer called an anaplastic astrocytoma. She lived an amazing life. She was 10 years old when she was diagnosed, and she died when she was 12. And she was a powerful girl, right? She had an amazing motto of never give up and keep on smiling. And she influenced tons of people, especially us, but it was really difficult losing her. And I can't even begin to tell you the changes that happen in the life of a father and a mother and brothers and sisters, a whole family, uh, and social network even, when something like that happens. But it was massive, and it affected us in a lot of ways. And on top of all of those things, we were in a weird position, culturally even, as a family, because we had left the church in 2000 and late 2010 or early 2011, we had left the Catholic Church and we lived as unbelievers for a number of years, in fact. Uh, but we still retained, as a family, we retained conservative and even traditional values. And so we found ourselves at a deficit and it was really difficult. Right? It's a very difficult thing to, to maintain and to navigate. But it wasn't just emotional for me and I wasn't the only person going through all these changes. My kids were also going through an extraordinary number of changes. And as they were going through these changes, they began asking questions. And their questions were rather interesting. My daughter, one day, I think she's playing Legos or Duplos or something, maybe Barbies. And she, she asked me, she said, hey, Papa, who built the builders? And I'm thinking, you know, is she talking about the Lego pieces or whatever? What is she talking about? And she said, no, 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 the builders of the universe. <laughs> so she's asking this question right, in a childlike way, but she's asking about the origin of life. And then weeks later, probably about two weeks later, my son Athanasius, he's now the eldest that remains in the family, and Athanasius came. And we got in this, this kind of back and forth having to do with how you treat your parents. He disrespected mama. And so we were talking about honoring your mother and father. And he, he started bringing up questions about standards of morality. Why, why do I need to believe that? What is the reason for that? Who says I need to believe this? You know, I know that's what you think is good. Or what if I don't think this is good? Or what if I think I'm right? Do I have to do certain things? And who says I have to do those things? Is it just their opinion? These are questions of morality, ethics, right? Difficult things to, to talk about. And lastly, our, our middle child, Ambrose, he's outside playing puppets. And he said, Papa, I, I need to talk to you in private. And I said, okay. So we went inside and went up to his room. He closed the door and I sat on his bed. And he, he kind of takes a breath for a minute and he says, um, I pray. Now, We'd never prayed as a family, not since he'd been born. And so there was no way that he learned this from us. And I didn't know where he'd be learning it from. I was suspicious, though. <laughs> where is he learning this? And I, I kind of joked with him about it, almost in a demeaning way a little bit. I said, well, does God, like, talk to you? And I thought in my heart in a way that, well, he's just going to think, uh, I'm just talking about myself. Nothing's happening. I'm, I'm going to stop. But his answer surprised me. He paused and he looked down and he kind of shuffled his little feet. And then he looked back at me and he says, no. He said, it's not like God's talking in my ear or anything, but I still think it's the right thing to do. It was this real existential moment for me. <laughs> it, was, it was so crazy. The, the place that they put me in, I started wondering if they were kind of conspiring with each other, right? talking in secret, little whispers against Papa, and I got mad. I, I called family meeting right away, time out, and I yelled, and everybody's freaking out, whoa. And we go downstairs, and I'm accusing each one of them, I'm pointing at them, and I'm, I'm grilling them. But they didn't conspire. There were no whispers between each other. It was independent 
And they came to me independently, even privately, spontaneously, in fact. Some of the stuff just had to do with whatever happened to be in the moment. And as we were talking about it, Ambrose asks me this question that really did change uh, the direction of our family ever since. He said, Papa, are we Catholic? Now, for those who may not realize this, my children, with, with the exception of Samantha, who passed away, my children are named after doctors of the church. <laughs> so not just saints, they're like mega saints. And so we talked to them and said, well, you know, we're unbelievers. We don't go to church. We don't believe in God. We haven't gone in a long time. But yes, you're named after them. And it was around Christmas time, and we'd already put up some of our ornamentation around the house. And every year, uh, even when we weren't going to church, Ambrose's godmother would send us a nativity piece and just a new thing to add. And we'd always put it up. And it, that little light went off in his head and he said, well, you know, maybe we can talk to my godmother and we can go to church with her. And we thought we could get out of this. And I thought that the godmother lived in Kalamazoo where we used to live when we went to church at the same church as her. So we called her. And lo and behold, she moved to Grand Rapids. <laughs> and so she lives in the same town as we do. And so there was no getting around this. She went to a, a local church. So we went. And again, lo and behold, as uh, the procession begins and everything for the Christmas vigil, and then the priest walks by. And it's the priest we had when we were Catholic back in 2010. So it's the same guy. He's now, he's now stationed at, at a parish in Grand Rapids. So all of this stuff, I mean, it just, it, it, it was wild. And there was a lot to think about that night. You know, I even, I even talked to the priest afterward and he, he said, welcome home, prodigal son. I wasn't even back in my heart yet. Okay. I wasn't, I was still in this weird place in my life. Okay. But we never stopped going. And we decided during that time, that we heard they had daily mass, and so we decided to go. So we went to a weekday mass in the morning, and we saw that it was packed with these kids, tons of them. And they were extremely devout, pious kids, and super sharp in those uniforms, and best, best uniforms in Grand Rapids, hands down, period. Right? And our kids began looking at that, and they were interested to know more. So we investigated, and we were amazed at what we found. We found a school that, that learns Latin from the earliest grades all the way through to the end. And in fact, we were there for their award ceremony. And we saw a whole bunch of kids getting awards nationally recognized for the accomplishments that they've done. The school has been awarded nationally. They say the Pledge of Allegiance every single day. They take entire courses that are created for to learn about government and they begin with plato and on top of that they have courses on economics and you just don't see this very often they read books like chronicles of narnia and homer's odyssey they read plays by william shakespeare they read dante's inferno in fact athen just read this year he just read beowulf and they had to answer at the end of the class they had to answer a question with three uh, uh, three answers for yes and three answers for no. And the question was, did Beowulf die an honorable death? And they had to be prepared to stand up in class and to debate this. They, they put together these, these plays that a lot of times schools will do plays and they're kind of meant for younger people. These ones are long. <laughs> right? They did Les Mis last year at the Wealthy Theater. And this year, Ambrose and I got to go see the uh, the students perform My Fair Lady, and it was remarkable. But what got me the most with all of this, and I mean, each one of those things I said, I could go on for a long time. There's a lot more about the school, art, music, science, math, all of it, amazing. They write in cursive every day, for crying out loud, okay? <laughs> this is not your normal school. Um, but what got me the most is mass every single day morning. Every single morning, those kids are at mass. That's how they start their day. It is centered 
around Christ. It is centered around the cross. It is centered around the altar. It is centered around the scriptures. It is centered around the preaching of the word in a homily. It is centered on this. But I went to Mass with them one morning. And after communion, I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I'm kneeling down and my eyes are closed. And I don't even realize it. But Ambrose and Teresa had walked around the back and they were lined up with their class to sing. And with my eyes closed, all of a sudden, I heard them start to sing. It was Ave Maria. And I listened and it was... It was unlike any other kid singing I'd ever heard. (laughs) I'm sure that all of you have heard kids sing a bazillion times. We all know what kids sound like when they sing. And yet, at this place, it was so heavenly. They focused so much. And we have nuns at the school, right? These these are some, some old school black and white 1940s and 50s nuns. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, black and white era stuff. You know, they got the long black and the, the white top that makes it go up high and everything, the veil. And, and they're awesome. They are amazing. But the, the, uh, one, of the one of the nuns, she uh, teaches the kids how to sing. And she, she's so good at it with, with teaching them uh, pitch and key but it was, it was so perfect. And I just wept. I wept. And I thought back. I thought back to my daughter who died. I thought back to Teresa who asked me who built the builders. And now she recites the creed that, that she believes in God as a creator of all things, visible and invisible. Everything that was made to my son, Athanasius, who asked questions about what we should believe and why do we believe what we believe and, and what's right and what's wrong and who says so. And now he studies the catechism. He goes to penance. He does examination of conscience. He, he evaluates his life as a, as a young man. And Ambrose, who secretly told me that he prayed, He told me another secret later. And he told me, because they've learned to serve at the Mass, and they look really cool in their, in their little vestments. And they even got to help out Father Sirico when our son Lucian was baptized. But at Corpus Christi, there's a procession going outside. And you walk around the streets, and they ring bells, and you sing songs, and there's girls throwing flowers, flower petals all over the sidewalk. It's a, it's a beautiful event. And you periodically will kneel down and you'll do different prayers. And after one of those were done, my son looks over at me. And he says, Papa, church is my favorite place in all of the world to be. And I said, I'm glad to hear that. And he goes, well, I kind of feel like maybe one day God will want me to be a priest so that I can pray in the church all the time. And I told him, I said, the world needs you. The world needs you big time because I did. Sacred Heart makes a lot of little Ambroses. God uses Sacred Heart to form them, to keep that flame within them burning bright, to equip them for what they're going to be in their lives, whatever that may be. And I'm so grateful. And that's why, that's why I'm telling you this. And this is the big, super duper, huge honking request. I want to invite you to share this with your friends, share this with your family, pray about it, think about it. And if Sacred Heart and what you've heard about Sacred Heart, if it sounds like the kind of place that you want to see not just survive, but thrive, consider making a donation. Thank you so much. I hope to speak with you in the comments section. 
and share this far and wide, everybody. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Love this video? What a coincidence! I do too! Now head on over to PaleocratDiaries.com for more videos, blogs, book and movie reviews, even Team Tiny Dancer stuff. And don't forget to check out our new members and services pages. It's how I pay for my kids to attend Catholic school. Until next time, Memento Mori.